On the early morning of December 7, 1941, as Japanese aircraft unleashed torpedoes and bombs on the American fleet at Pearl Harbor, sailors swiftly responded. Following the onslaught, 15 U.S. Navy personnel were honored with the Medal of Honor for their valor that day, including four from the USS California, BB-44, with only one surviving. While the USS Arizona, BB-39, and USS Oklahoma, BB-37 tragedies are more widely remembered, the USS California also endured significant damage during the attack. Anchored in just 40 feet of water and isolated on Battleship Row, the California was vulnerable. Early in the attack, two torpedoes struck its port side under the armor, causing severe damage. The mix of seawater and fuel oil led to power and light failures. Shortly after, a bomb detonated near the port bow, further harming the ship. As the California started sinking at the bow and listing to port, damage control teams countered by flooding the starboard side. Around 8.45 a.m., another bomb hit the upper deck, went through to the second deck, exploded, and ignited a fire. Despite efforts to restore power and mobilize the ship, fuel oil leaks and fumes hampered the crew, especially those handling ammunition. During the attack, many sailors and officers were off their ships, as Saturday nights were common for leave. With senior officers like Captain J.W. Gunkley and Commander E.E. E. Stone absent, the USS California's fate initially rested on junior officers such as Ensign Herbert C. Jones. Herbert C. Jones from Coronado, California joined the U.S. Naval Reserve at 17 in 1935. After two years in college, he underwent midshipman's training on the drill ship Prairie State and was appointed as an ensign in November 1940. Arriving in Hawaii in early 1941, Jones was soon followed by his fiancée, Joanne, whom he married in June. Joanne settled in Honolulu. On December 7th, during the attack on Pearl Harbor, as the USS California lost power, the gun crews struggled to retaliate against the attacking Japanese aircraft. The ship, in a peacetime state, had limited ammunition on hand, necessitating the manual transportation of five-inch shells, each over 50 pounds from lower decks due to the power outage. Jones had already performed heroically on the California, rescuing a sailor from a smoke-engulfed compartment and leading an anti-aircraft battery against the attackers. When the gun crews neared depletion of their ammunition, Jones took charge of a team to fetch more from the lower decks, working fervently to ensure a continuous supply. Their efforts were disrupted by a bomb explosion at around 8.45 a.m., which fatally injured Jones. Despite attempts by two sailors to evacuate him from the increasingly fiery compartment, Jones insisted they leave him, prioritizing their safety over his life. His last words reportedly were, Leave me alone. I am done for. Get out of here before the magazines go off. Ensign Herbert Charpia Jones was just 23 when he died. On the tumultuous morning of December 7th, leadership emerged at various levels. Gunner Jackson, Charles Ferris, elevated to warrant officer in January 1941 while serving on USS Mississippi, BB-41, had been reassigned to California. On that fateful morning, the Georgia-born Ferris, who joined the Navy at 20 in 1933 and reported to Mississippi shortly thereafter, was leading an ordnance repair team on the third deck. The initial torpedo strike on California hit just beneath Ferris's location, violently propelling him into the ceiling and back down. Despite being dazed and grievously injured, Ferris quickly rallied his team to start a manual ammunition supply chain to the ship's anti-aircraft guns. As they worked through the darkness caused by the power failure, amidst rushing water and fuel oil, Ferris directed shipfitters to counteract the ship's portward list. Overcome twice by the toxic fumes, Ferris repeatedly regained consciousness, persisting in his efforts to expedite the ammunition supply. Amidst the escalating peril of fume-filled flooding compartments, Ferris heroically saved 17 sailors, rescuing them from oil-submerged spaces. His actions were instrumental in sustaining the gun crew's defensive efforts. Ferris survived his severe injuries, undergoing recovery in hospitals for the fuel oil inhalation. He rejoined California, received a commission in July 1942, and later sought medical treatment in 1943 for lingering lung damage. Ferris continued his service, finishing the war as an officer on USS St. Paul, CA-73. Originally awarded the Navy Cross for his December 7th bravery, 
1948 review upgraded his honor to the Medal of Honor. Lieutenant Ferris received the medal from President Harry S. Truman at the White House on June 25, 1948, alongside Iwo Jima hero Francis Pierce. By the time of the Pearl Harbor attack in December 1941, Chief Radio Man Thomas Reeves was a seasoned veteran in the Navy. Born in 1895 in Connecticut, Reeves initially served in the Naval Reserve during World War I. After his discharge post-war, he re-enlisted in the regular Navy in 1921. Over the years, he advanced to Chief Petty Officer, having served on several battleships. During the attack on the USS California, as conditions deteriorated, Reeves had to leave the main radio room. At Gunner Ferris's behest, he joined in manually transporting ammunition from the lower decks to the anti-aircraft guns above. Unmindful of the peril, Reeves remained in a blazing corridor, continuing to supply ammunition until he was overcome by smoke and fire. Chief Radio Man Thomas James Reeves was just two days shy of his 46th birthday. Robert Scott, born in Ohio in 1915, enlisted in the U.S. Navy in early 1938 and was assigned to the USS California by August of the same year. On the morning of the attack, Scott headed to his battle station, operating an air compressor in a forward compartment below decks. This compressor was crucial for multiple ship systems, signifying its importance by being the assigned station for a highly skilled enlisted member. Following the torpedo strikes and subsequent flooding, the crew in the compartment began evacuating. However, Scott chose to stay, even as the water and oil levels rose to his waist. Gunner's mate V.O. Jensen, who tried to convince Scott to leave, eventually lost consciousness and had to leave Scott behind. Scott's final declaration to Jensen was, As long as I can give these people air, I'm sticking. Machinist's mate, First Class Robert Raymond Scott was 26 at the time of his sacrifice. 